the bounty hunters. Checking in? Dude, you do know you're not on vacation, right? J3 asks Hoagie, who lowers his sunglasses with a grin as he walks over then, starts to unbutton his Hawaiian print shirt. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I'm sure the girls say you're cute, but not to me, you're not. Then Hoagie opens the shirt to show that the oversized garment is casually hiding a massive bandolier of modified explosives, body armor, two pistols, and likely more around the man's back. That makes more sense. Why the shades, though? Itchy asks, and one of the explosives is tapped. These are flashbangs. I've got enough on me to give the whole sector an epileptic seizure if I don't outright burn out their retinas. I want answers as much as you guys. Who the fuck sidestepped me with my own damn forces? What fucking idiot thinks they can get away messing with the station staff? And most importantly, who the fuck do I have to skin alive for trying to start shit when I'm trying to keep shit calm? You're taking this personally, Mr. T notes. The first time I saw a dead body was when a stupid teenager took a pot shot at me in a horny daze. One of the other station staff sent her hurling into space and that's all she wrote for the dumb kid. I have worked my ass off since that day to keep the casualties down, but I've still seen and made enough corpses to give the killer and the fucking coroner in any snuff film a run for their money. Now, this shit is happening, and someone's trying to stack the bodies up in the most disgusting ways imaginable. I don't like seeing corpses, but this is one I intend to make myself. After we get answers out of it, Mr. T says and Hoagie nods. What's your heaviest toy? I got an auto shotgun loaded with buck and a plasma pistol on my back in addition to a standard ablator and banger that you saw on my chest. I've also got override authority for most major systems and the credentials to get us anywhere but the captain's personal chambers. After that is a solid 20 flashbangs, a K-bar in my left boot and a 9mm in my right. Sounds good, but if you start speaking like a surfer, I will deck you. J3 remarks. Don't worry, dude. It's just a radical Michelangelo impersonation. Hoagie taunts him and then leans away from a swing. Not going to ask, but please don't talk like that. I wanted to take a swing at you myself, Mustard says, and Hoagie nods. All right, we've met up. We've said our hellos. Where is the Nebula View Hotel? The map says it's near here, but I can't find it. The entire level has a sort of fakeness to it that is normally associated with the inside of a casino, but it's goddamn everywhere. Everything matched and coded just so to seem to radiate smug and wealth while hiding the fact that you had a camera and likely a gun on you at all times. It was setting most of them on edge, at least somewhat. You're about eight levels too low for the main entrance, but we're damn close to the service entrance, which I prefer. We're going in the back door where they pay less attention. This way, if they want to pull a fast one, they've got less time to properly set it up. Everyone down with that? Hoagie asks, and there's nods all around. He leads them up a level to an unassuming back door with a loading station next to it. The door is predictably locked. Skriak Muriak. He glances back and sees the whole group staring at him as his high-pitched bit of sheer nonsense is accepted as a password. It's in the captain's home language. It's really fucky sounding. No, no, we get that, but did it have to come out so high-pitched that it sounds like your balls are in a vice? J3 asks, and Hoagie nods. Really? The meaning changes entirely if you try to lower the pitch. It's one of those languages that does not translate well. Still, a voice recorder could, couldn't? Mustard begins to protest before Hoagie grins viciously. The password itself is half of it. The other half is here, Hoagie says, leaning his head back and exposing his neck. He taps a tiny, clearly unnatural, square in the middle of his throat. Anyone who gives the right password without one of these will just trigger a priority, one alarm. There's also a different inflection to the same password to let security know that there's station staff in need of rescue. Captain's on top of things, 
Yes, she is, Hoagie says with a rub of his neck. There's a reason you're not allowed in her chambers, isn't there? Mr. T notes and Hoagie looks away. Forget it. We need to focus. Thank you. And for the record, I was aiming for being the power behind the station, but the captain's already got a squeeze. Bet that went over well, Itchy remarks. She was flattered and amused, thankfully, Hoagie says, opening the door and bidding them in. Now be ready for trouble, but don't look like you're ready for trouble. The fuck? Walk casual. We got every reason to be here. I always wear bright, eye-gouging colors on official business. It's kind of my thing. Dude, just use your uniform, J3 says. Uniforms are fetish wear only around here. May as well go around in assless chaps, Hoagie remarks, and there's a lot of snorting. What he says next causes a round of laughter. And yes, we did learn that one the hard way. The internals of the Nebula View Hotel are plain and unadorned. Makes sense that they'd spend their money on squeezing more out of their customers than on staff. All right, the main server room should be nearby. Let me do the talking and... And you'll what? A voice asks coming around the corner and Hoagie finds himself face to tits with a gigantic pissed off woman bat hybrid that's walking on her knuckles. Daniel Eastman, Station Command. We're investigating some idiot who thought it was a good idea to subvert my own forces and try to kick off a riot in Sector 1, Hoagie says, pulling at his collar and revealing a badge there. Oh, oh shit, the massive Sonier says, backing up a little. We just need to get to your data storage and we'll be out of your hair. Hoagie continues and she nods. He offers her a toothy smile that she flinches at somewhat. Fantastic. Now you just step aside and look pretty while the scary humans get shit done. The Sonier straight up retreats and the group stares at Hoagie. Number one rule of working station staff is that if you're disrespected, you gotta set an example. I don't like doing it, but I've written more than a few obituaries if you understand my meaning. The bright shirt's like a poison dart frog's skin. A loud fucking warning that you've got one chance to obey. Jesus. Mr. T mutters and Hoagie shrugs. You do what you have to and on Octor and Spin, you gotta body the bitches that disrespect you or they'll never stop. Which is why you wanna get your hands on the person we're tracking. That's why you sent assassins to watch. Stay in line or get one in an obituary. Mustard remarks and Hoagie nods. Yay. Places like this run on respect, and respect comes from how big the heap of bodies you're sitting on is and how willing and able you are to add to it. He explains as he leads them down a bit more, checks his communicator, and quickly barks that weird password at another door that pops open. Inside are entire towers of data, and he looks around a bit. You guys know what you're looking for? No, hold on a moment, Mr. T says. Bike? Yes, we're in the main server room of the Nebula View Hotel. Where do you want the communicator? Easy enough. Set it on to the nearest one and give me a minute or three. Bike orders and Mr. T does so, leaving the men to stand around. So after you start to build reputation, things get better, right? Mr. T asks, and Hoagie lets out a mirthless bark of laughter. That's a no. Even if I have the entire station pissing their panties at the sight of my flamingo print shirts, there's still some new idiot with some new trick showing up every 10 minutes. The temporary population of the station is easily a hundred times the size of the permanent residents. And while word is getting around that disrespecting the tret looking psychopaths covered in weapons is a bad idea, by the time most people figure it out, they leave this place and some new idiot needs to be taught. Love the idea that you have keep giving people hell, but speaking of, what's the deal with the bomb? Asking for a friend? Bike asks from the communicator. I don't fucking trust these people. The only way to get them to take you seriously is for them to know that you can kill them at any time. And the bomb was because I'm not getting into a sniping contest when I can't proper distance and they can bounce their attacks off the fucking walls. Fuck that. I fight the twin shots from the next sector over if not further. 
The bitches have an advantage in this station with the consistent atmosphere and often shining walls. Dodging a laser coming around the corner is just unfair, Hoagie protests. Yes, because fair fights are a thing, Itchy says with a grin. Hey, bombs are fun and practical if you've got your eyes on the area and a detonator in hand. Hoagie protests. I wasn't arguing. Hell, I love seeing a well-made beast go boom, but yours left them alive to talk about it. A bomb that doesn't do its job is just sloppy. There was a load-bearing wall nearby. I didn't want to crack it open. Not to mention I had to run around in disguise to deliver it, and so it had to be fairly small. That Angla-looking girl in the fetish outfit was you? Bike demands in shock. A bit of makeup, pheromone blockers, and the right clothes, and contact lenses, and you can disguise yourself as anything. More like a lot of makeup and fucking basketballs, we were wondering what the fuck was going on. I had the bomb in parts and stored in a bunch of balls I was carrying around in bras, Hoagie says, and there's laughter. You may laugh, but you can get all sorts of shit done if you don't look like a dude. The girls around here are in the habit of flat out ignoring each other if they can get away with it, and that has let me get up to some serious shenanigans. I mean, hell, half the blackmail I've got is because no one thinks the shy girl covering up is in fact packing an entire arsenal of spy gear in the bra. If they don't sense Axiom being twigged oddly, they don't even think you've got a weapon. Really? Oh, yay. Most of the girls don't seem to notice consciously, but they sense Axiom to judge how dangerous something is. It's one of the reasons why they keep underestimating humans. Every other race has an Axiom signature that gets more apparent as they get agitated, and technology has its own feel too. We're just blank whether we're calm or homicidal. Makes it hard to intimidate as they think it's an endless bluff. But then, if you follow through, you really scare the shit out of them because they had no way to be ready for it at all even if you were sending every signal you could that they were looking death square in the eye. All right, we've got the next step. Whoever this is clearly wants to move around. The room the command was sent to is connected to an account that leads to Section 4, a place that cashes in valuable medals for credit in the station, Bike explains. We're on our way. Hoagie says before grabbing the communicator and tossing it to Mr. T. Not sure how this is going to help. A cash for gold style place will have a record of who it's sold credit to because this is a fucking pirate station. And if you don't think the local businesses are looking to blackmail and get out of their dues, then you're naive as hell. Hoagie replies and Mr. T smiles. Well then, the hunt continues. I wonder when our fox will make its fatal mistake. Who knows? I'm starting to wonder where the faked image and the scapegoat come in. There's still a lot of unanswered questions. Thankfully, we've already got people on deck eight because a fair amount of those questions can only be answered by the victim's family and friends, Mustard says before cracking his neck. Still think things will be, don't say it. Don't you dare start looking for more trouble Otherwise, you'll jinx us and we'll have entire graveyards to fill before this is over, Hoagie warns. Shit sorts out fast here and often lethally. Hey, were you being honest? Mustard asks as they start to leave. The security guard from earlier watching from a wary distance. About what? The Axiom sensing. Are we really throwing them off that hard? You don't really notice it because most girls are about as subtle as sledgehammers around humans. They can't sense the axiom in us, so they go ham to make up for it. So we don't really notice that we can sense their emotions. But yay, you can judge their moods if you just pay attention and learn what feels like what. They can't do it back because we're blank. They can also sort of sense axiom reliant tech, but not ours meaning we can carry our weapons almost anywhere and no one notices, and no one can tell if we've got intent to use them until we do. All in all, we're not so much in the uncanny valley as building an underground bunker there for some of these girls. Damn, if it weren't for the sheer horny factor, we'd be something out of a horror movie. J3 notes. We kind of are. 
Give it some honest thought and you realize we're basically the incubus species of the universe. Yes, because I wanted to think of myself as a sex demon. Wonderful. Mr. T states dryly and getting the group around him to snort in amusement. 